I'm on the east coast of Scotland. Including the Isles, Scotland has over 10,000 kilometres of coastline, more than either England or Wales. And this is central to the Scottish Government's drive for producing more of its energy from sustainable sources. I'll take you over now to see Professor Ian Bryden from the University of Edinburgh, who will tell you more about some of the things that are going on in this area. Nature has been very good to Scotland. Our west coast is exposed to uh, very energetic waves incident from the Atlantic Ocean. The country is also situated between two massive tidal generating systems, which results in very energetic currents in locations such as the Pentland Firth. The C-Gen tidal energy converter has blades similar to those used on wind turbines to convert the kinetic energy of the tidal stream into electrical energy. The amount of power you can extract is proportional to the density of the fluid. So for a similar flow velocity and propeller size, a water turbine will generate more than 800 times more power than a wind turbine. Scotland is at the centre of the development of a new marine energy industry. Here in Edinburgh, for example, we have Palamis Wave Power, who are developing the Palamis Wave System, and of course we have Aquamarine, who are developing the uh, Oyster System. My name is Deborah Smith and I'm Marketing Coordinator at Palamis Wave Power. I'm standing now next to one of our Palamis P2 units, which is currently in the final stages of commissioning at our quayside here in Leith Docks in Edinburgh. The Palamis is made up of five tubes, which are linked by hinge joints. It's the movement between those two, five tubes which generates electricity. Palamis gets its name from Palamis platuris, a species of sea snake, due to the way it moves in the water and its long, thin shape. My name is Nick Pelosi, Senior Production Engineer at Palamis Wave Power. Here we are inside one of the four power conversion modules that makes up the Palamis Wave Energy Converter. It's inside here that the electricity is generated prior to it being fed back into the national grid via subsea electrical cable. The motion of the Palamis is resisted at each joint by hydraulic rams. These hydraulic rams pump high pressure fluid into storage accumulators which you can see here behind me. We can then release this stored energy in a controlled fashion back into hydraulic motors which subsequently turn electrical generators to produce the electricity. In order to achieve the maximum output from Palamis machines, we're able to control certain parameters concerning how the machine moves in the waves. And we're able to do that from our control room here in Edinburgh. Computer simulations are used to predict the motions and loads of the structure, as well as to provide the power predictions for a waveform of Palamis machines. The computer models are verified against model scale experimental tests and full scale operations. This video shows a comparison with 20th scale model tests that were conducted in a wave basin in Nantes in France. You can see that the simulation on the top gives very good agreement with the video of the experimental tests. When most people begin working on wave energy they think about up and down mo motions. But actually, the horizontal motion is much better, especially if you're in shallow water. One of the machines that's uh, doing this is, is called the Oyster. Uh, the second machine has just been installed and will be tested soon. And uh, you have a hinge on the seabed and a flat moving like so. 
and its power takeoff is by hydraulic rams. I hope we'll be seeing a whole row of them working quite soon. I've come to the Scottish island of Isla to look at the first wave power machine which actually produced energy which was fed into the grid. It's called the limpet and as the name implies it's actually built into the rocks. Limpet is an oscillating water column device. Inside this structure is a massive concrete chamber and as the waves come in and out the water level rises and falls within the chamber and compresses and decompresses the air above and it's this air which activates the turbines which generate the electricity. In a minute I'll go inside and have a look at the turbines. Kevin here is the maintenance engineer for this system and he's kindly shut off one of the turbines so we can actually see it. This Kevin I think is a Wells turbine, is that right? Yep, yeah, that's correct. And one of the fantastic features of this is that it's self-rectifying and it actually works just as well if the flow is coming out one direction or in the other that's one. Right. Could you just show us yeah, inside? Sure just, um, yeah. I'll give it a wee spin. Yeah, if you could just um, spin it round a bit, Kevin, then. Okay, now you can, um, Kevin shut this one off, but in fact there's one operating next door because there's two Wells turbines in this system and you can hear the other one in operation. In a minute we're going aside and have a look at that one. We've come through now to see the smaller turbine. Kevin's kindly shut this one down, but the big one next door is still operating. And again, this is a Wells turbine. Could you just um, show us how this operates? Yeah, there? I'll rotate the blades so you can see. Kevin's brought me into Limpet's control room where he can monitor the different parameters. For example, the top one, I think, Kevin, is the pressure inside the chamber. That's is right. that correct? That's correct. <coughs> and then he can also see the speed of the turbine and the actual power output from the machine can be continuously monitored from here. The University of Edinburgh is in the process of building a totally new wave and tidal current test facility. This will be the All Waters Current and Wave Basin. This uh, is 30 metres in diameter with a 2 metre depth test section. We'll be able to test wave and tidal current devices at one tenth scale and we will even be able to test arrays of both wave and tidal current energy systems. Hi there, my name is Stuart Brown. I'm CEO of Flowwave TT Limited. Uh, I'm standing here inside the new facility being built at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, its long name is the UK All Waters Combined Current and Wave Test Facility. Uh, otherwise it will be known, we think, as the Flowwave Tank for short. The facility itself comprises a 30 metre uh, diameter water tank, uh, which is five metres deep, uh, and inside that tank will be fitted a current generation system which comprises uh, impellers which push and pull water across the tank to create a tidal flow within the test area. And around the entire circumference of the tank there will be placed 168 wave makers which then are able to overlay on the top surface of the water uh, very complex wave patterns and in combination these two things will simulate literally anywhere around the UK waters and the UK coastline. The All Waters facility will complement our existing curved wave tank. Uh, this will allow you to appreciate at least some of the principles of a large test device. This is a curved uh, tank test facility at the University of Edinburgh. This tank was built in 2002. Uh, it's, it is um, made of 48 uh, independently controlled wave makers. Um, it lets us test 
uh, models at uh, 100 scales and simulate uh, complex seas. In order to study um, the interaction between waves and currents, and also the way they interact with structures, um, we've set up in this tank a technique called particle image velocimetry, or PIV for short. Um, PIV lets us uh, measure velocities underwater and obtain velocity maps that um, tell us about the way the waves and currents interact with each other. To make PIV measurements, we produce a light sheet, a laser light sheet in the, in the water, and the water is seeded with um, small tracer particles. We record the position of these tracer particles on successive images, and from that information, we can derive the velocity, a velocity map of the flow in the field of view of the camera. The wind people are way ahead at the moment, thanks, I think, largely to Danish politics. We've got to catch up with waves and tidal streams. I think that in the near term, the tidal stream will be uh, bigger and quicker, uh, but eventually the resource from the, the, the wave power offshore will be perhaps double the tidal stream.